Hello viewers, welcome to yet another episode of the Chit Chat Show. On today's episode, we are talking about World Mental Health Day and this year's theme is Health Promotion and Suicide Prevention. We have our guest here, Mr. Lamin, Mr. Mane. So kindly introduce yourself. Um, good afternoon viewers. My name is Baba Mane. As she has rightly said, um, we're here to talk about mental health and of course it related issues. And then the focus will be on the um, um, World Mental Health Day. And the theme for this year is um, health promotion and then the prevention of um, suicide. World Mental Health Day has been put aside by the WHO for it to be celebrated every year, like on the 10th of October, to um, bring it to the attention of people, to the importance of um, mental health people in the community, and of course how best we can able to include them in our daily activities. Thank you. Um, this is a very important topic and I'm personally very passionate about it because mental health is something that we do not talk about often in the Gambian society. I don't know if we are living in denial or we don't think we are affected as much. So what do you think is the problem for people um, not being very much informed about mental health issues Probably, in the Gambia? Um, um, Madam Janke, I think it will be an issue of taboo and of course um, traditional belief that people are having. Mm. And then the other factor, if I might also like, you know, um, point out, would be the issue of people not well informed about mental illness in the community. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at it, it's like um, information have not been filtered to the grassroots level for people to know about mental illness, its causes, and how best we can able to recognize it at an early stage in order to seek for treatment of help. So as a result, I think those might be contributing factors for the issue that you just embraced right now. Right. As a mental health practitioner in the Gambia, why not give us a brief understanding of mental health and mental health issues within the Gambian context? Uh, when we say mental health in this case, yeah, is the um, successful adaptation of the everyday activities. Right. Because um, every day I'm stressed that we encounter every day. Mm -hmm. It's like if an individual is able to adapt to it successfully, we call it mental health. Yeah. But on the other hand, mental illness is any disease or any illness experienced by any individuals which affect their emotion, mm -hmm. their thoughts, their behavior, and of course it's not in line with their cultural belief, mm -hmm. which has effect or negative effect on their life and of course livelihood of daughters that are with them, such as the friends, the families, and of course the loved ones. Nice. So that means World Mental Health Day promotes mental health. It promotes mental health. Yes. So if you have... Not only promotes, it also educates people about mental, mental health. health. So to prevent any mental health issues. So what are some of the most common mental health issues you face on a daily basis? Um, the common one that we face at the institution, which I always want to clarify all the time, is the issue of drug addiction. We call it DIP, which is drug induced um, psychosis. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it very well, I will say all the time, it's like I always say okay. I always put question to it. Why? Because if you look at it, it's like usually when the family members come, the first point the, that they usually raise is like he or she has started taking substance. Yeah. Probably the illness might be there. This substance might be a triggering factor. Mm -hmm. Might be the thing that started the illness again. Maybe the individual must have, you know, been like, you know, experiencing schizophrenia which he or she must have entered from, probably from the fathers or the forefathers. Mm -hmm. But the substance that he or she has started taking might trigger the condition. Yeah. So when the escort come or the family members, also, also ever bring the patient, they will say that he or she has started taking substance. Don't, yeah. And in our community, we now believe that if you're taking those substances, it's like you, it would like, you know, lead you to mental illness. Mm -hmm. The illness might be there, but the factor that trigger the condition might mm -hmm. be the substance. Oh. So we face um, DIP, which is drug induced psychosis, mm -hmm. schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. These are the two major factors or two main diagnoses that we usually encounter at the institution. Yeah. But as I said, DIP counts a lot. Mm -hmm. And then, as I said earlier, I always put question to it whether actually it's DIP. Mm -hmm. Because we know that definitely the cases around that drug addiction is really happening. But as I said, some people are taking that as a coping mechanism yeah. to what they're experiencing already. But based on what you're saying, it means schizophrenia is one of the key causes it's of one mental. Of the key causes of mental illness in this country here. So, what are you doing to address such? Um, such as this that we are doing right now. Yeah, talk sensitizing to people about, people. Sensitize people about yeah. it. We go to the community, talk to people about it, mm -hmm. of course. And we also have other NGOs or other youth um, organizations or CBOs, that's mm -hmm. um, civil based organizations, yeah. that comes out, you know, and then they working with us, mm -hmm. like, you know, to talk to um, community about mental illness, such as No Health Without Mental Health, mm -hmm. AMD, which is Association of Mentally Stable Gambia, mm -hmm. SAF Gambia, Mobe Gambia. But well, these are organizations that educate people about their mental health. 
yeah. that educate people on the prevention of mental illness mm -hmm. and how to recognize the early signs and symptoms of mental illness and where to take, um, seek treatment. Of course, the institution as a whole, just Tanka Tanka, mm -hmm. we also go to radio station. Yeah. Of course, we have a partnership with um, City Limit Radio. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we go to um, Paradise, invited by um, University of Uganda Medical School, um, school mm -hmm. the CMI program, yeah. of course, and then um, King's. FM, we yeah. go there, DHK FM, we go there and talk to people, you know, about mental illness. If I should take you back a bit, can you talk a bit more on schizophrenia? Like, how, it's genetics, right? Yes. Um, schizophrenia, if you look at it, three factors mainly can cause schizophrenia, mm -hmm. we believe in. One will be the biological factors. Either two, there is an imbalance in the chemical um, component in the brain because we believe that you know every in you know you have certain chemical component in your brain. Mm -hmm. We call it, you know by chemical factors. Mm -hmm. And then if there's any increment or if there's any decrement in any of those ones, my lead to mental illness. And some of those components might be um, dopamine, epinephrine, um, serotonin, mm -hmm. non-epinephrine. Mm -hmm. These are medical terms probably too difficult for one to understand. Yeah. And one of the factors will also be people usually inherit this thing from their families. Okay. And then that's one of the key things that we need to talk about a lot. Mm -hmm. Because people believe that whenever you know people have mental illness, either probably you know they're possessed by devil, yeah. you know, they've stolen from someone, yeah. you know, they owe someone, they refuse to pay the individual, you know, they've done something bad to someone. Yeah. And they, we don't know sometimes some of this, you know, we need we inherit from our families, yes. from our fathers, mm -hmm. from our forefathers. And then the other factor will also be psychosocial. Okay. Probably a very unhealthy family life, mm -hmm. when children have been abused when they were very young, yes. you know, when um, people, you know, are in a very disrupted marital life, mm -hmm. like the husband and fa wife always yeah. fighting, yeah. children grow up in that society. Yeah. And then the socio-cultural factors will be wars, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, earthquake, mm -hmm. you know, earthquake, you know, like, you know, tsunami and other stuff that people yeah. experience mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it might result to mental illness and the which um, schizophrenia yeah. can be a key thing which they can also experience. Wow. So if we, if it has to go back to their family lineage, how can you detect it early enough? Um, Are there any medical tests one needs to do to know if one is very prone to be, you know, in mentally sick or unstable unfortunately to our level at this level at, at this time yeah. we don't have anything that we can able to test an individual to know whether they have a mental illness or not okay and even in the western world i'm not very so on, on probably until recently but usually what we do is like what we call mse mm -hmm. which is the mental state examination of the individual yeah. we assess the individual there are factors that we look at in the individual mm -hmm. to assess the individual we ask certain questions to determine the mental state of the individual okay. and of course the Behavior of the individual also counts. As I said earlier, mental illness is any illness experienced by any individual which has effect on their emotion, mm -hmm. their thought, their behavior. Yeah. So these three key things are very important. We look at their emotion, their thought, mm -hmm. and of course their behavior. This okay. is what we assess. And then the early signs that one need to detect might be it's like um, spending time alone, yeah. neglect of personal hygiene, mm -hmm. spending time on bed sleeping or not being able to sleep a lot, mm -hmm. you know, talking to oneself. Mm -hmm aimless roaming, you know, overreaction to criticism. Okay. Well, we are criticized every day, yeah. but if you overreact to it, well, my one of the signs. Mm. I'm not saying any individual who overreact <laughs> to um, any criticism if yeah. individual is mental ill, yes. but overreact to the criticism, you know, can also be a factor. Okay. And of course, as I said, um, um, hearing things, mm. talking to one health, one, um, oneself, mm -hmm. paranoid towards people. When we say paranoid, that's suspicious towards people. Yeah. You people that people are after you, people want to kill you, people want to harm you, might be the early signs and symptoms of um, mental illness. Over crying or not being able to act to certain situation. Yeah, for example, not being able to balance your emotions, is it? Yes. That's those in nutshell, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Let's say for example if someone will come and tell me that your father passed away and I start laughing. Mm -hmm. You know, that's very abnormal. Yeah. And they tell me, Baba, your wife gave birth to a bouncing baby boy then and you I start crying. crying yeah. You know, it's, those are you can cry that but not yes, extreme. Don't worry, you know, it tears of joy. Crying, but yeah. it's like to a certain stage, you know, it's like people start question, yeah. is Baba okay? Yeah. So those are so much things that we need to, you know, observe, okay. you know, to be able to detect the other side. I would really want to know what do you think society's role and even the family members of people that are mentally on is can I say mentally unhealthy? Mentally imbalanced, mentally Imbalance, healthy, yes. yes, you can you What can are their what are society's and family's responsibility towards these people? Um, Madam Yenke, that's a very important question, and I think that would be the most important question that you'll ever ask in this um, discussion here. Because mm -hmm. if you look at it, as I always tell people, any mentally patient that you see on the street come from home. 
Yes. Any mental ill person that you see on the streets have a family member. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we need to do all the time, these mental ill people that we see on the street are part and parcel of the society. Yes. The position that we occupy today, mm -hmm. we are once occupied by them. Mm -hmm. The classroom we sit in today, where they were once sat in that classroom. Mm -hmm. The car that are driven by today, whether in government or NGO, mm -hmm. were once driven by them to yesterday yeah. or some time ago. Mm -hmm. So as a result, they are part and parcel of us. It's like because society have a very big role to play it in the care of the mental ill patient. Mm -hmm. How can we do it? It's like when we see them, let's see them as part of us. But you see people on the street, it's like even when the little patient comes, they want to eat something. Mm -hmm. It's like usually we give them leftovers. Yeah. Sometimes it's like we don't even care about them. Mm -hmm. It's like I don't believe the society at the whole much. I blame the families. Yeah. If I have a mental ill patient on the street, I take care of them. Mm -hmm. Or him or her. You have a mental ill patient, you take care of him or her. At the end of the day, we have less people on the street. That's true. And then as I always tell people, mm -hmm. Gambia here, we are so fortunate to have treatment free in this country. Mm -hmm. Ranging from your first contract that you review to your referral or your admission except if materials are not available those are the medication mm -hmm. but your feeding your shelter your medication are all free yeah. so why won't you help your family member mm -hmm. so this is why i said you know family and society have a very big role to play how can they play that role let's take these people to be part of us let's not stigmatize them yeah. let's not discriminate them mm -hmm. because stigmatization and discrimination play a very big role yeah. in this in the, in, in the treatment of these people yes most of the part time people will come to institution and they will treat them they'll say that baba my family don't like me and i'm actually why are you saying so he said they bring me here at the end of the day mm -hmm. when we go out Fingers will be pointing at me. Uh -oh. Whatever you do in the community, you say, ah, Boko Fale, don't listen to him or her. And he was, he was one admitted in the hospital. Make them aggressive. They make it? them very aggressive. And the way sometimes we act to them. Yeah. It's like people question us sometimes when they come, how yeah. are you able to manage with these people? Yeah. I say, come on, we see them as our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Sometimes something that he or she wasn't doing yesterday, if you see him or her doing that today, yeah. you know that you know something is wrong somewhere. Yes. He or she sixty, why he or she doing that today. Mm -hmm. You take it that with them. Mm -hmm. You be encouraging them. Yeah. We admit patient and discharge them. Come on, those people are not engaged. Yeah. They are not employ mm -hmm. provide something for them for them to go for their follow-up yes these are mentally ill patients yeah. they are not working mm -hmm. they're not earning even to go for follow-up we don't have anything for them mm -hmm. so i think society and the committee has a very big role to play wow wow okay uh to wrap up this interview what do you have to say about some of the facilities available for mentally um challenged individual is unfortunately tanka tanka psychiatric hospital is the only hospital in the country yeah. though we have a focal person in every major institution in this country here mm -hmm. but unfortunately tanka tanka is the only place as a result we want this place to be expanded mm -hmm. though we want people to be treated put in the community mm -hmm. for them to be in the community but we need to have what we call a rehabilitation center in this country mm -hmm. person admitted they rehab before they take him back to the community yeah. person admitted we have also we also have what we call halfway home yeah. you admit someone take the individual to the halfway home mm -hmm. before you introduce the individual fully to the community yeah. if government can be able to help us with some of those things yeah. if philanthropists can be able to come to our aid honestly we will very much appreciate some of those things because tanka tanka alone with a bed capacity of 100 patients mm -hmm. cannot accommodate a population of 2 million definitely people not. we can't definitely so not. as we will calling on the government yeah. And of course, the um, good Samaritans to yeah. come to our aid. And then so, lastly, tell them that Tanka Tanka is free of charge. It's free of charge. Yeah. Tanka Tanka, you don't pay. Mm -hmm. As I said, except if medication aren't available, Hello, yeah. they will prescribe for you to go and buy. Ah, yes. Other than that, everything is free for them. Mm -hmm. So as a result, please help your loved ones, yeah. help your family member for them to be able to see God. And see lastly, people. again, can you encourage young people that are venturing into nursing to really look into, you know, practicing mental health? To be, how do you say it? To study, to study. and yeah, to study. Because I, so. I know, because we've been there. You also have um, human capital issues there as well. A human resource is one human of our main challenges yeah. in the institution there. Yeah. Because if you look at it, you know, today our doctors and nurses are specialized in gynecology, yeah. in pediatric, yeah. in accident images, orthopedic. Nobody talk about mental health. Mental health. Yeah. And then that one also, if you look at it, probably because of the risk attached to it. Yes. So as a result, we're asking government to encourage these people. How? Probably increase incentive, you know, attached to these things. Yes. You know, create more, like, you know, um, 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 capacity building. Yeah. Create more training for this individual. Yeah. It will be so unfortunate to do in this country, it's only American International in University that provides psychiatry. Yeah. Probably maybe with legacy. Mm -hmm. But our own very university, University of Gambia, is not, pro, you know, in, it's not offering psychiatry. Yeah. If people want to specialize in this, you know, in, in, in this area, where do we go to? We yeah. go outside con country. Yeah. And not every individual can be able to afford that. Yeah. So we ask asking government to come to our aid mm -hmm. and we also encourage the young ones mm -hmm. the doctors and nurses for them to specialize in this area mm -hmm. because the person you help today might be your own yeah and then any area that you specialize on it's like you have an impact in the community yeah. so you come into mental illness is not you know in, in a waste of time yeah. it's like the risk that people are afraid
afraid all the time. Mm -hmm. It's not that much risky. Yeah. It's like these are brothers and sisters, you know, that we need to be working with all the time. Yes. That we need to help. If you are not there, who are to help them? That's true. Today is them, tomorrow is can be any of us. And whenever we happen to fall a victim, we happen to become ill, we want to be helped. Yeah. So as a result, help someone today so you can be helped tomorrow. Wow, it's like definitely a noble career. Very and what you guys have been doing has been really, really impactful. So dear viewers, this is the end of our, our interview. I hope we all learn from it and then, you know, we can look into our perspective when it comes to mental health and mental health issues Absolutely. and how we address such issues within the society. Absolutely. Like you said, let's support these people. Let's not discriminate them. They are our own individuals. And then how we treat them really helps in their treatment, how will I say it, in their recovery, recovery yeah. stage. So thank you and until next time. Thank you, Mr. Mane. You're welcome. Yeah, for more amazing, interesting and inspiring videos, you can like our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe on our YouTube channel by hitting on that bell.